what it seeks to achieve. Uh, what is the difference between conditions, commitments, and corrective measures in Mexico? There are some questions that I will address in this pre presentation. The Mexican landscape suffered a substantial institutional transformation in 2013 due to a constitutional amendment. As a result, two competition agencies were created with sectoral jurisdiction and a new competition law was enacted in the following year. On one hand, we have the Federal Economic Competition Commission with a competition enforcement and advice powers in all sectors of the economy, except for telecommunications and broadcasting, which is the, within the Federal Telecommunications Institute's scope, with additional characteristic that it is a sectoral regulator. The Mexican competition framework contemplates preventive, sanctioning, and corrective procedures. Uh, depending on the procedure, the Mexican law uses different terminology to remedies available. First, following the best international practices, we have merger control to authorize or not concentrations. And in that context, the authority may authorize a transaction subject to conditions in case risks to competitions are identified. Additionally, the law establishes a procedure to sanction legal mergers and relative monopolistic practices, including vertical restrictions and abuse of dominance. In cases of illegal mergers and relative monopolistic practices, proceedings can be early terminated by submitting commitments. Finally, as, an, as a consequence of the uh, constitutional amendment, a new procedure was created called barriers to competition and access to essential inputs, which enables the authority to impose corrective measures in the market under scrutiny. As stated before, relative modern policy practices, there are two routes to follow. One, establishing an infringement of the law, where the competition agency enacts a fully fledged provision decision. In the case of Mexico, this is the option is the most common. Or B, a commitment decisions who have uh, the nature of settlement, and no surprisingly, most of the cases have been following this path. Economic engines investigated are entitled to submit commitments before the mission of the DPR, which is equivalent to the statement of objections in the European Union. And the legal standards to be fulfilled are the uh, that the commitments proposed have to be legally and economically feasible and appropriate in order to avoid and eliminate the relative monopolistic practice investigation under investigation, stating time frames and terms of verification thereof. In this regard, what is legal boundaries within the discretion of the power of the competition agency to accept or not commitments uh, submitted? Can the authority deny potential adequate commitments in order to establish a judicial precedent? If yes, on what legal basis? Is there tension between the inquisitorial strategy and an open dialogue to address competition concerns? The Mexican law provides for commitments in a section entitled Exception and Fines Reduced Reduction Procedures. In that uh, regard, how can fines be reduced when liability has not been established? It has worked uh, noting that commitments, at least in principle, do not involve necessarily the establishment of an infringement of the law and do not involve an admission of guilt to the, by the economic agent in question. However, in order to stakeholders affected to pursue damages, uh, a tribunal, for example, in Mexico has stated that uh, the authority has to explicitly find that there was a breach to the law. For, this is the case of the Telmex Mega Multa case. These legal questions have not been fully answered yet. Considering the benefits and flaws of the commitment, we can say that overall, that its pragmatism is the most valuable feature. It provides procedural efficiency in the sense that the regulatory time frame, if we consider the investigation, trial, life procedure, and the appeal stage, can take an average of three or four years. Uh, it represents savings in terms of litigation costs 
And from the authority's perspective, the allocation of resources can be canalized into priority cases to fulfill their competition enforcement goals. On the other hand, uh, there seems to be a blurred line in relative monopolistic practices when determining whether a practice is considered anti-competitive. Moreover, there is an effective, effectiveness question. Efficiency should not undermine effectiveness. Do commitments achieve the goal pursued? Sometimes commitments work as a convenient tool for the authority when there is no strong case to prove, thus avoiding the scrutiny of the commitment analysis in the judicial stage review. And as most cases are being settled, there is a lack of judicial precedent development surrounding relative monopolistic practices. In some jurisdictions, market testing is a common practice to provide or achieve efficiency and transparency in the procedures. However, in, in the case of Mexico, this is limited due to confidentiality obligations. Finally, what about the challenges for seeking uh, damages reparation? Uh, in Mexico, there is a common thought that the structural remedies are more likely to be employed in merger control and behavioral remedies in abuse of dominance cases. Also, this view might change. For instance, in a merger, the, the, the merger discovery partner, the IFT employed behavioral remedies. Structural remedies are considered an ultima ratio mechanism for sanctioning and, or corrective procedures due to their higher intrusive nature. They are supposed to be only employed in exceptional circumstances and when behavioral remedies are seen as insufficient to recorrect or prevent risk, risk to the competition. Uh, it is one of measure and in principle uh, does not necessarily require long-term monitoring, which means has that the allocation of resources to verify compliance and time investment, uh, there are savings there. However, in the case of Mexico, the Nadro Marsan illegal emerging has proven differently. We must ask ourselves how easy these remedies are to be circumvented. Depending on the degree of the structural intervention, what type of error are we trying to avoid? Are we facing over enforcement or other enforcement concerns? For the answer of these last questions, exposed evaluations are most relevant. Without doubt, this is a relevant area of opportunity. Regarding deterrence, we will have to ask whether commitments achieve the dissuasive effects thought. How can we achieve balancing in the playing field? The new law restricted the scope for the agents investigated to submit commitments during the trial-like procedure. What is the role of the market testing and how important it is? What is the right balance regarding disclosure and confidentiality in this kind of procedures? It might be the case that the privation of judicial presence could be addressed through well-structured commitments resolution as a subtle tool to fill the gap created. The use of uh, commitments as a maneuver for strategic litigation might be mitigated through the once every five years rule that is contained in the Mexican law. Compliance and monitoring are key to achieving the deterrence. In Mexico, authorities have struggled in pursuing fully compliance of commitments. This is, for example, the, gas, the industrial gas case. The law established that following the fine of non-compliance in a use of dominance, a possible divestiture of assets uh, could be applied. Uh, moreover, disclosure of commitment resolutions may facilitate monitoring with proper channels installed to report deviations, for example, with the boiling mechanism. Uh, other open regulatory dialogue is uh, much needed and crucial, either between the competition agencies and the private sector, or sectoral regulators and between international agencies. Uh, the latter uh, requires cooperation and coordination to deliver the best results in terms of consistency, efficiency, and effectiveness of commitments, decisions, and remedies. International cooperation in case with effects in different jurisdictions has played a critical role in emerging control. Today, international cooperation seems to be most relevant considering cases regarding uh, abuse cases or regarding digital platforms where competition concerns may be the same in different jurisdictions. Uh, in sum, 
I believe the, that ultimate goal of all the commitment system is achieving a balance between procedural efficiency and legal efficacy.